So the read the electronic meeting statement uh, pursuant to the declared state of emergency in the Commonwealth of Virginia in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and to protect the public health and safety of our board members, staff and the general public. Today's HRTPO board meeting is being held electronically via Zoom. These electronic meetings are required to complete essential business on behalf of our region. Per the requirements of the Code of Virginia, we posted uh, today's meeting notice, agenda, and supporting documentation on the HRTPO website for public review. We also provided electronic copies of this information to our board members and other interested parties. Today's meeting is being live streamed and is available for viewing on the Regional Connection the YouTube channel. Very clear. The meeting is also being recorded. That you will have in courtroom. I'm sorry, if everybody could stay on mute, please. Thank you. Today's meeting is being uh, live streamed and is available for viewing on the Regional Connection YouTube channel. The meeting is also being recorded and will be available after the meeting through our HRTPO website. Uh, members of the public were invited to submit public comments to the board in advance of today's meeting via both email and phone call, and I can report that no public comments were received uh, within 48 hours of the meeting. So before we begin today's meeting, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Number one, we ask all participants remain on mute with their phones and computers uh, until they are providing input. I, I know that we're all multitasking, so we appreciate your cooperation there. After speaking, please remember to go back on mute. Uh, really important that you identify yourself when speaking or providing a motion or a second. If you could state your name and who you represent, that will be helpful. And just a reminder, uh, Ms. Arledge will uh, be calling all our votes today. They must be done via roll call uh, and recorded in a minute. So uh, thank you again on behalf of our staff and our region uh, for, for your cooperation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, back to you. Thank you. Uh, item number two on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion and second to approve the agenda as presented. So moved, William McCarty. As for a second. Second, second William Merrill. Any questions or discussion? I'd like to ask Ms. Arlich to do a roll call vote, which will also double as attendance. The City of Chesapeake, Dr. Ward. Franklin, Mayor Rabel. Gloucester, Mr. Bazzani. Hampton, Mayor Tuck. Aye. Isle of Wight, Mr. McCarty. Aye. James City, Mr. Eisenhower. Aye. Newport News, Mayor Price. Aye. Norfolk, Mr. Thomas. Aye. The Cosin, Mayor Helsel. Portsmouth, Mayor Glover. Aye. Southam Southampton, Mr. Gillette. Suffolk, Mr. Bennett. Aye. Virginia Beach, Mayor Dyer. Aye. Williamsburg, Mayor Ponds. Aye. York, Mr. Shepard. Aye. HRT, Mr. Harrell. Aye. WADA, Mr. Trogdon. VDOT, Mr. Hall. Aye. Aye for WADA as well as that Thank you, Mr. Trogdon. Uh, DRPT, uh, Ms. Mitchell. Virginia Port Authority, Ms. Vick. Aye. Uh, the General Assembly, Senator Locke. Aye. Senator Spruill. Aye. Delegate Heretic. Aye. And Delegate Ward. That concludes the roll call. M Ms. Arledge and Mr. Mahaley, um, Dr. Ward is having, um, we're having audio challenges, but Dr. Word is on the screen representing Chesapeake. Dr. Word, if you could give us a thumbs up or thumbs down, please. Thumbs up, that's a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Word. 
and thank you for that, Mr. Crum, because I saw her on the screen earlier and I was surprised that um, I didn't hear a response. That brings us to item number three, which is public comments. So you've already the, heard the motion that. is approved, uh, Mr. Chair. Sorry about that. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, item number three, as Mr. Crum has already said, that um, uh, individuals were invited to comment ahead of the meeting. There were none received within 48 hours. So we're going to move to item number four and ask Mr. Crum to introduce that, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, today uh, represents a very important milestone for us as we proceed with the update of our region's long range transportation plan. Of course, this is our compass and guiding document that outlines our region's priorities on what transportation projects um, we are planning to implement with various funding sources and funding partners on behalf of the Hampton Roads region. Uh, Del Stith, our principal who manages this process and her staff have been working extremely hard under incredibly tight deadlines. Um, and you receive the presentations from her uh, periodically over the last year on the work that we've done to, to get us to this point. So I'm gonna turn um, the floor, Mr. Chairman, with, with your permission over to Del Stith, our principal, and Del will share screen and walk you through her PowerPoint presentation that outlines for you um, uh, some background information on the long range plan, where we're at in the process and the important critical actions needed by the TPO board today. So Dell. All right, thank you very much. All right, um, so good morning. Uh, thank you, Bob, for that introduction. Um, last month, I presented to this board the draft uh, fiscally constrained list of projects for the 2045 long range transportation plan. So as Bob stated, we, we, we've done some uh, review on that list and, and today I'll be presenting um, the, the final list to you for your consideration. So before we get to that, um, some, some background and overview slides of the long range transportation plan. Again, our long range transportation plan or LRTP is the blueprint for the region's transportation yeah, future. Good. And it identifies all regionally significant transportation projects for our region over the next 20 years. This is a product that we update every five years and we do this so that we can reflect changing conditions such as different assumptions for population and employment growth or maybe even how technology can impact travel demand. Um, and of important note is that the LRTP must be fiscally constrained uh, so it, it is not our transportation vision. Um, we can't have our full wish list. We can only include those projects that we've identified reasonably available funds for within the life of the LRTP. And then lastly, I'd like to note that all regionally significant projects that are anticipated to receive federal or state fundings must be included in a long range transportation plan. So this slide shows um, the project planning and development process and where the LRTP fits in this story. Um, so our long range transportation plan essentially is the springboard for our regionally significant projects. Uh, that's where um, projects uh, start to be conceptualized, alignments start to be identified. Uh, NEPA is generally um, started in this area. So for regionally significant projects, again, they have to be in the LRTP before they can even move forward in the development process towards uh, programming, which you see um, is, is the green square, and that's really where uh, project schedules are, are finalized and uh, real funding is identified. And then uh, projects move towards construction. And then finally, when projects are open, it, it's operating and maintaining those projects. So to develop a long range transportation plan uh, takes the, the, the full four or five years for, for Hampton Roads. We, are allotted five years to update our plan, and it takes a lot of regional stakeholder coordination. Um, we work with local localities, locality staff, transit agencies, uh, the military, port, um, our board advisory committees, uh, state and federal partners, and of course the public uh, to, to arrive in, at a finalized long range transportation plan. So we've been working on updating our LRTP to the horizon year of 2045 for the past five years. And, and that timeline, sh this timeline here shows planning milestones and we're, we're towards the end looking to adopt the plan uh, by June or July of, of this year. 
And the following slides are going to highlight uh, planning activities that we've accomplished over the last five years. So for the first year, uh, we worked with regional stakeholders to identify uh, those changing conditions that I mentioned that we update our long range transportation plan every five years. So looking how the region may look uh, for a 2045 horizon, um, again, how technology may impact um, how people travel in the future. We worked with our regional stakeholders to develop a uh, survey, uh, partnering with our regional connector study um, to gauge public input on some of these regional priorities. We also introduced that we wanted to uh, use scenario planning to develop this 2045 long range transportation plan. Again, looking at the future, um, the one thing we're certain of is that we're uncertain of, of what's gonna happen in the future. So when it comes to planning, uh, we, we uh, worked with our stakeholders to say that we, we wanna look at different ways the region may uh, develop over the next 20 years um, and then help identify the most robust projects for the region. So in the second year, uh, we worked with locality staff on the population and employment forecast and looking at how that growth could affect travel behavior in the region, uh, especially going across the harbor, um, across the Hampton Roads Harbor and even across the Elizabeth River. In the third year, uh, we worked on finalizing our scenario narratives for our scenario planning effort. Uh, in addition to our traditional baseline, uh, we developed three additional scenario planning themes, again, working with our regional connector study. Um, we, we identified three other scenario narratives, looking at greater growth on the water, uh, greater growth in urban areas, and greater growth in suburban areas. Again, with the intent to test all of our candidate projects across each of these scenarios, not picking a preferred scenario, but instead acknowledging that various elements of these scenarios could happen in the future. So working with our stakeholders and with the public, uh, we collected candidate projects. We collected almost 300 candidate projects to analyze for the 2045 long range transportation plan. And the sum of the project costs for these candidate projects was about $70 billion. Again, while fit, this is why fiscal constraint is important because we know that as a region in a 20 year horizon, we cannot afford all 70 billion uh, of these candidate projects. So in the fourth year, uh, we really worked uh, closely with our regional stakeholders to collect data to analyze uh, these almost 300 candidate projects. Um, we ran each of the candidate projects through our Title VI in environmental justice methodology. Um, we collected a lot of spatial data, as you can tell, um, see in these maps on this page, uh, looking at various proxemics in terms of candidate projects providing accessibility to maybe the port or to the military or high density population and employment, or various uh, Title VI and environmental justice communities. We also looked at vulnerability to sea level rise and, and many other attributes, all which fed and in, feed into our project prioritization tool. We also looked at uh, challenges that the region may face over the next 20 years and strategies that we either have in place or can put in place to help address these challenges. So this past year, we've really focused on developing those project prioritization scores for each of our candidate projects. Again, with our project prioritization tool, we look at uh, three different perspectives. We look at project utility, uh, which is the ability for a candidate project to solve a problem such as congestion or safety. We also look at economic vitality, which is the potential for economic gain. And then we look at project viability, which looks at project readiness and compatibility. So we scored um, about 270 projects is what we ended up scoring, developing uh, a, a, a total score for each of these candidate projects, which is essential in, in guiding us to the fiscally constrained list. Um, this past year, we also received the transportation revenue forecast. And this comes from various sources, um, from uh, federal sources, state sources, regional sources, and even some uh, locality and uh, various agencies have identified funds for regionally significant projects. So that brings me to the fiscal constraint. Um, and as a reminder, fiscal constraint is the demonstration that we have identified reasonably available funds through the horizon uh, year of our long range transportation plan, which for us is 2045. When we look at our project costs, we do have to express them in year of expenditure. Uh, and this is to account for project inflation. And again, those project prioritization scores that I just talked about 
are a very important guide into helping pick those projects uh, to include in the constrained long range plan. And essentially the short of fiscal constraint is that our revenue forecast has to be greater than or equal to our total project costs. So for our 2045 long range transportation plan, when we factor in all of our federal, state, regional, local and agency assumptions, uh, this region over the course of 2021 to 2045 can anticipate just over $30 billion for transportation improvements. More than half of this is set aside for maintenance, administration, and operations. So 17 billion is, is set aside off the top uh, to take care of these very important uh, items to make sure we're preserving the transportation system that, that already exists. So that leaves us with about 13.7 billion for additional capacity. And again, this is federal, state, regional, local, and various other uh, agency revenues. So working with uh, our, your stakeholders, um, regional stakeholders, we have identified the fiscally constrained list of projects. I presented the draft to you last month. Um, this package of projects uh, equals about $13.5 billion. Um, this map shows uh, that our projects are across the region. It's multimodal. We have interstate, non-interstate projects. We have transit projects, uh, active transportation projects and some um, high uh, priority regional studies that we couldn't constrain necessarily for construction, but that those particular projects are, are of enough importance that we wanted to include those, those particular projects as studies um, for in, in our 2045 LRTP. The actual list, uh, it's 139 projects, um, is a part of your agenda package. Since I presented this, the draft list to you last month, there have been modifications. Um, which are summarized on this slide. Uh, since I presented to you last month, we have added uh, four projects. Uh, three are in the city of Hampton. Um, so we added for construction Coliseum Drive Extension B at uh, $15 million, and then two studies uh, along 64, one at North King Street, and then the other at LaSalle Avenue. These are interchange studies at a million dollars each. And then we also received a request from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel District. Um, their uh, one project, the Parallel Thimble Shoals project is already in our 2045 long range transportation plan for construction. And since they are progressing uh, with their second parallel uh, tunnel, they asked us to also include uh, the Parallel Chesapeake Tunnel for preliminary engineering with funds coming from the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel District. We have removed two projects from the draft list since I presented last time. That includes the 22nd Street Bridge in Chesapeake. That is because this project has been completed and is open to the public. And then we also received uh, a recent request. Uh, this particular project was not part of your agenda, but the city of Portsmouth staff asked us to remove the bike lanes on Churchland Boulevard as this project was deemed uh, unsafe. So they asked us to, to remove those, those that bike lanes project. In terms of demonstrating fiscal constraint, um, as I stated earlier, uh, with our transportation revenues, we can anticipate about 13.7 billion for additional transportation yeah. capacity. When we sum up the project costs on the, on the fiscal constraint list, uh, our total cost is 13 and a half billion. So we are under that revenue. So we have demonstrated fiscal constraint. So in terms of outreach, um, in addition to presenting the draft list uh, to this board last month, we've also coordinated with the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, we sent the list to the Active Transportation Subcommittee, uh, the Community Advisory Committee, the Freight Transportation Advisory Committee, and we also had a 30-day public review uh, period for the draft list. For the public review, um, in because of COVID, uh, we couldn't have face-to-face -face meetings, so we did incorporate um, some additional resources on our website uh, to help the public review the draft list. Um, we posted our draft reports, uh, the draft funding plan, which documents all the funding assumptions and how we develop the fiscally constrained list of projects, and also a project information guide, which includes a one-page summary for each of the projects on the fiscally constrained list. We developed an interactive GIS map, uh, so, uh, viewers could zoom in to any particular project and we posted links um, a link to the the presentation i gave to the board last month uh, so the public could have 
um, access to more information on how this list was developed. So in terms of support, uh, the TTAC at its March 3rd meeting uh, this year um, has recommended board approval of the fiscally constrained list of projects. We also presented the list uh, to the Community Advisory Committee and the Freight Transportation Advi Advisory Committee. And both of those committees have approved resolutions of support, which are included in your agenda package. So the recommended action today is to approve the 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan fiscally constrained list of projects and the associated 2045 LRTP funding plan and project information guide reports. Thank you. I'd like to ask for a motion and a second to approve the um, presentation, which is the 2045 LRTP fiscal constraint list of projects. I would move for approval, William Harrell, HRT. Second, Mayor Price. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? I'm Shepard. All right, Mr. Shepard. Hello. Mr. Shepard, you have a question? Uh, no, disregard, thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, please stand by. Okay, any other questions or comments? I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, I just want to confirm that the plan is still to amend the LRTP to reflect the recommendations of the regional connector study that we're still undergoing. So once the regional connector study is completed, which, um, you know, maybe a year or two from now, depending on what those recommendations are and what our revenue uh, sources are, that could be something that the board considers. I mean, that was certainly what we discussed when we decoupled it a while back, right? Correct, correct. Any other questions or comments, discussion? Okay, Ms. Arles, Mr. would you please? Yes, Mr. Mr. My, my apologies, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, you, you'll notice that about 50% of the monies within this planning horizon to pay for our projects are going to come from HR TAC. And Mr. Chairman, I think that you're very aware of the close coordination between the TPO and HR TAC as we work to uh, on that strong coordination. Um, Mr. Chairman, would you, um, would, if, if would, would you um, authorize Mr. Page to just make a few comments about, because I think that linkage uh, with, with us and HR TAC and VDOT is, is so critically important. I will follow whatever advice and guidance you give. <laughs> uh, Mr. Page, would um, any comments from your perspective, um, just confirming ability of HR TAC um, to, to fund in advance? Sure, thank you, uh, Director Crum and Chair Tuck and other members of the TPO board. Um, HR TAC at its March 18th regular meeting, um, the commission endorsed unanimously the proposed 2045 long range plan of finance update uh, for our HR TAC in the region's high priority projects. The 2045 update uh, includes $9.55 billion of uh, programmed projects uh, through 2045 that are HRTF related and also $552 million for the very first time, something to celebrate here today. We have the Hampton Roads Regional Transit Fund uh, in our long range plan with those related projects at that $552 million um, project level for 2045. We did extensive coordination, the staff of the TPO, um, HR TAC and HRT uh, in the development of, of this constrained list that we moved forward with and the HR TAC Commission will receive public comments and will conduct a public hearing. Uh, and I'll report back to the, to the board uh, any public comments that were received for consideration at the commission's action by no later than its June 17th annual organizational meeting. So of our $9.55 billion uh, of HRTF related projects, they include what Ms. Stiff mentioned, which was the 7.353 billion of HRTF and we also included all of the HRRTF moving forward. So it's a great time for celebration here and really happy to be a part of this as we're tracking at HR TAC with the TPO on the same schedule to make sure we have everything adopted in place. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, 
that that's all we had. I just thought that uh, cross connect related to that regional funding was important, sir. So back to you, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. I'd like to ask Ms. Arledge to do a roll call vote, please. Chesapeake, Dr. Ward. That looks like a thumbs up, Ms. Arledge. Okay, thank you. Franklin, Mayor Rabel. Gloucester, Supervisor Bazzani. Hampton, Mayor Tuck. Aye. Isle of Wight, Supervisor McCarty. Aye. James City, Supervisor Eisenhower. Aye. Newport News, Mayor Price. Aye. Norfolk, Councilman Thomas. Aye. Bacosin, Mayor Helsel. Portsmouth, Mayor Glover. Aye. Southampton, Supervisor Gillette. Suffolk, Councilman Bennett. Aye. Virginia Beach, Mayor Dyer. Aye. Williamsburg, Mayor Pons. Aye. York, Supervisor Shepard. Aye. HRT, Mr. Harrell. Aye. Wada, Mr. Trogdon. Aye. Vida, Mr. Hall. Aye. DRPT, Ms. Mitchell. Virginia Port Authority, Ms. Vick. Virginia General Assembly, Senator Locke. Aye. Senator Spruill. Aye. Delegate Heretic. Aye. And Delegate Ward. Aye. That concludes the roll call. Mr. Mahaley, uh, I have a note from uh, Ms. Vick that she answers yes. Got it. And the motion is approved. Very good. Um, Mr. Chairman, back to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, that brings us to item number five. I'll go back to Mr. Crum to introduce it. Yes, so as we continue to proceed uh, with our long range plan approval process, the next step will be our air quality conformity analysis for the projects that you just approved. So I'll, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you're okay, I'm gonna send that back to Ms. Stiff to provide the board an overview. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, uh, so the second part of the presentation, um, as Mr. Carr mentioned, is, is transportation conformity. So in terms of conformity, uh, conformity is the link between air quality, air quality improvement and transportation planning. And it essentially establishes the framework for improving air quality to protect public health and the environment. Um, conformity analyzes the LRTP and the transportation improvement program to ensure that the system of projects are compliant with the state's air quality plan. And federal funding uh, approvals are given to highway and transit activities that will not cause new air quality violations or worsen existing air quality violations. So there are three air quality designations. An area can be an attainment, um, which means that air quality is cleaner than the primary standard. Um, an area can be a non-attainment, which means that that area um, does not meet the primary standard, or it can be maintenance, uh, a maintenance area, which means that the area has been re redesignated to an attainment after being in a non-attainment status. So for Hampton Roads, uh, Hampton Roads is an attainment for all current applicable national ambient air quality standards. Um, previously, Hampton Roads was in maintenance uh, of the 1997 eight hour ozone makes before these, uh, these um, standards were revoked back in 2015. So Hampton Roads is in attainment now. Uh, they were previously in maintenance for a revoked standard. As such, Air Hampton Roads is deemed an orphan maintenance area. And because we are an orphan maintenance area for conformity, we are subject to conformity, but it's a substantially streamlined conformity requirements, which for us means that we don't have to do any conformity emissions modeling. And that essentially for us, conformity is demonstrating fiscal constraint, which this board just took action on with the previous agenda item, and that we consult uh, with certain regional stakeholders. 
Um, so that's what this this agenda item now is is to uh, initiate conformity. And I would like to highlight that once we start conformity, um, once it is underway on the 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan, that uh, no LRTP or TIP amendments will be considered until we receive a finding of conformity um, from the federal government, unless that we can clearly um, state that those uh, potential amendments are conformity exempt. And the reason this is important is because if we try to amend the LRTP or the, or the TIP, we could uh, subject this region to have to start conformity all over. Conformity is generally a three month process and we are on a very tight timeline to have the 2045 LRTP adopted by June or July uh, of this year. Um, so that's why we're saying no LRTP or TIP amendments from here on out until we receive that finding of conformity unless again, we can clearly demonstrate that that amendment request is conformity exempt. So in terms of the conformity process, um, the board um, just took action on fiscal constraint, which is critical to the LRTP and conformity. And then so we're asking as part of this agenda item for the board um, to approve the conformity project list, which is the fiscally constrained 2045 LRTP, plus all of our current active uh, projects in our transportation improvement program. And then also initiate the public review of the uh, draft regional conformity assessment. Um, looking ahead, uh, the conformity steps, um, the public review of this regional conformity assessment will begin with the posting of the TTAC agenda, which is on March 31st. Then it, on April 7th, the TTAC uh, will meet. And as part of the TTAC meeting, we will have an interagency consultation group meeting as an agenda item in which that interagency consultation group will review and approve conformity related items. And this is the conformity schedule and the conformity project list. The TTAC will also consider the draft regional conformity assessment report and make a recommendation for the board to approve uh, that regional conformity assessment report. At this board's meeting on April 15th, uh, the board will then uh, have, um, we will ask the board to review and approve that regional conformity assessment report uh, and the finding of conformity that's contained in the report. Upon board, uh, upon board approval, VDOT can then submit that regional conformity assessment to FHWA for federal review. So again, it's about um, typically about a three month process, but with our streamlined um, conformity uh, process, we're hoping that it doesn't take the feds uh, the entire three months. Um, so uh, between that April, June deadline, we should receive the finding of conformity um, from the federal government. Once we get once we receive that finding of conformity, then we can come back to the board to approve and adopt the 2045 long range transportation plan. So the recommended actions for the transportation conformity uh, is to approve the list of regionally significant projects for the 2045 long range transportation plan and the FY 2021-2024 transportation improvement program uh, for the regional conformity assessment. And then also approve the initiation of the public review of the draft regional conformity assessment, again, for the 2045 LRTP and 2021-2024 tip. Be happy to take any questions from anyone. Any questions for Ms. Stick? Any comments, Mr. Cohn? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, we would uh, ask for the uh, board's consideration of approving uh, the action as outlined by Ms. Stitt. I'd like to ask for a motion and a second to approve um, the two recommendations from Ms. Stitt. The pros come Bobby Shepherd. Dyer, Virginia Beach. I heard two, I heard Mr. Shepard first. Was that a motion or a question? No, it's a motion to move. Okay, Mr. Dyer, I'm sorry, Mayor Dyer, will you second? Yes, I second. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, any questions or discussion? I'd like to ask Ms. Arliss to do a roll call, please. Oh, it looks like I see Dr. Ward, are you saying something? Dr. Ward, are you trying to comment? Okay, I'm not sure what's happening, but uh, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Arliss to call the roll, please. 
Chesapeake, Dr. Ward. Franklin, Mayor Rabel. Gloucester, Supervisor Bazzani. Hampton, Mayor Tuck. Aye. Isle of White, Supervisor McCarty. Aye. James City, Supervisor Eisenhower. Aye. Newport News, Mayor Price. Aye. Norfolk, Councilman Thomas. Aye. Pocosin, Mayor Helsel. Portsmouth, Mayor Glover. Aye. Southampton, Supervisor Gillette. Suffolk, Councilman Bennett. Aye. Virginia Beach, Mayor Dyer. Aye. Williamsburg, Mayor Pons. Aye. York, Supervisor Shepard. Aye. HRT, Mr. Harrell. Aye. WADA, Mr. Trogdon. Aye. VDOT, Mr. Hall. Aye. ERPT, Ms. Mitchell. Virginia Port Authority, Ms. Vick. Aye. General Assembly, Senator Locke. Aye. Senator Spruill. Aye. Delegate Heretic. Aye. Delegate Ward. Aye. That concludes the roll call. And if I may, Mr. Mahaley, um, Dr. Ward has given us a thumbs up. Uh, that, that's a yes vote from Dr. Ward as well. Okay, thank you. And the motion is approved. Very good. Mr. Chairman, back to you, sir. And I appreciate that. And thank you, everyone. Um, this is a specially called meeting, uh, one business item. Um, but I do have agenda item number six, which says old and new business. So I will allow it if there's something that someone... Uh, burning issue to discuss. Hearing none, I'd like to thank you all for your attendance. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you so much, everybody.